Good morning, Dan Moran here from Concierge Diamonds. A few days ago, I attended a GIA presentation about a new service that they're offering called the Diamond Origin Report. Uh, I was pretty excited about it because the idea that, that we could get a certificate from GIA telling us exactly where a diamond was mined is just one more step in making sure that we are completely avoiding conflict diamonds or, you know, anything to do with exploitative labor practices, and obviously all of us want to avoid that. And of course, it's one more level of assurance that a diamond is natural rather, rather than synthetic. Uh, if you know where it was pulled out of the ground, you know it's a natural stone. So I was pretty excited to learn more about how they do this. I came away from that presentation pretty disappointed in GIA, and I, I want to tell you why. So an important thing to note about the GIA origin report is they are not able to issue it for diamonds that have already been cut. In other words, if you have a stone on your finger right now and you go to GIA and say, hey, I hear you do origin reports, tell me where this stone was mined. They can't do that. What they do is they examine a rough diamond, return it to the cutter for cutting it, and then get back the polished diamond, re-examine it, and are able to say, yes, this diamond was cut from that rough. Okay. So how are they knowing where the origin is? What they do is they've worked with large mining consortiums like De Beers and Alrosa and Petra, uh, Argyle, a few others, D Diavik in Canada, and those miners are selling their rough diamonds to large diamond cutters. Then GIA takes the stones from those cutters, examines them, returns them to the cutters, they cut them, GIA examines them again and says, yes, these polish, this polished stone matches that rough stone. You told us that that rough stone was cut in Botswana, was mined, was mined in Botswana, therefore this diamond origins uh, is Botswana. Well, there's a few issues there, right? The first thing is they're taking the cutter's word for it, that the bag is cut where they say that, that it was cut. Now, the Kimberley process and such makes that pretty reliable, but there's a difference between reliable and 100% scientifically proven, which is what the GIA origin report kind of uh, claims to do, right? When you see an origin report, it doesn't say we're pretty confident the stone's from Botswana. It says the stone's from Botswana. And they don't actually know that. They know that a polished diamond matches the rough diamond that they examined earlier. So that's one problem. Second problem is they've created a very unlevel playing field. Now what I mean by that is there are companies like Argyle that mines in Australia. So when Argyle submits them a rough stone and then later the polished stone, they say it comes from Australia. Petra is in South Africa. So when Petra submits their stones, they can say South Africa. Now De Beers mines in lots of different countries. And they mix together all of their rough diamonds prior to submitting them to GIA. So when GIA issues a origin report for a De Beers diamond, they don't say what country. They say it may come from one of the following four countries. Could be South Africa, could be Canada, could be Botswana, could be Russia. But it's definitely one of those four because that's where De Beers tells us they did the mining. Well, I don't know about you, I wouldn't want an origin report that says my diamond came from one of the following places and I don't know what. That's, that's no better than no origin report at all. So that bothers me on, as a consumer. But as a dealer, it bothers me that, that De Beers gets to play by a different set of rules than everybody else. I think GIA should say to De Beers, we want to examine the rough before you mix it. And if you won't disclose, we won't report. I think GIA should refuse to do origin reports for De Beers unless they're, they're able to examine the rough pre-mixing. I spoke to one of the senior people at GIA about this. They said they're working on that with De Beers. And you know, I guess that's what happens when large organizations like GIA come into conflict with large multinational companies like De Beers. You know, that negotiation will be protracted and hopefully GIA will win it. But for now, I think it really undercuts the origin report in general that some of them are non-specific about origin. There's another huge problem with the diamond origin report. There are millions of diamonds traded around the world each year. So you would think that you'd be able to get origin reports on those stones. But again, they can't issue an origin report on stones that are already polished, only on new rough coming out of the ground. And they're only working with certain miners and cutters on that. So I asked, of the millions of, of diamonds that are out there, how many have origin reports? To date, 12,000 stones total in the world. What that means to you as a consumer is, 
if you come to me three months from now and say, hey, I've seen all the GIA ads, because they're running ads all over the place. I see all the GIA ads about diamond origin reports. I want a diamond with an origin report because I want to feel good that I know that it came from someplace responsible. That's a well-intentioned and honorable thing for you as the consumer to do. But I'm going to have to turn around to you and say, I'm sorry, I can't provide you one. Why? There are very, very few of them in the world that, it, that even exist. And what are the odds that I'm going to find one that's commercially available and meets all of your other requirements? Because you know, no consumer is going to come to me and say, any diamond will do as long as it has an origin report. No, you're gonna come to me and say, I want a one and a half carat round, G color, VS2, excellent cut, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? You want what you want. And now adding another requirement, another constraint to stones that are so rarely available will mean that you'll be frustrated because you'll want to do the right thing and you'll want to say, listen, I want to be sure, but you're not going to be able to. So you're going to be forced to either abandon wanting an origin report or waiting until a stone comes along that has one and who knows how long that will take. And of course, for some time, those few miners that are getting those origin reports issued are going to be charging a premium for those stones. So do you want to pay 20% more? I don't know, maybe some people will. A lot of people won't, and then they're gonna be left feeling crappy because they didn't get the origin report that GIA is saying you're supposed to ask for. So, to summarize, the intention of issuing a diamond origin report from GIA I think is a good one. I think all of us would love to know exactly where a diamond was mined, on what day, by what miner, and what he had for breakfast that day. We would all like to know that. But this execution is deeply flawed. It is limited and restricted to stones that are are just now being produced. Any existing diamond that's been cut, this is not available for. It's an unequal playing field where some manufacturers are getting preferential treatment, which I think really undercuts the independent nonprofit nature of GIA in the first place. And it's so supply restricted that GIA is essentially making a market and giving those miners that it's working with an unfair competitive advantage. So three strikes against the origin report. At this point, I can't recommend that anybody ask for one until they come up with a better process that's more scientifically conclusive as opposed to taking manufacturer's word for it. I just don't see how anybody can get into one of these things. I just think it's a mistake. So as much as I'm a fan of GIA and the work that they do around the world, I really think they fell down on this one. And I've got to recommend against asking for a diamond origin report until they can do better. I will be the first one applauding it when they can do better and do it right. I think the goal is a noble, proper, and correct goal. But the execution is very, very deeply troubling. So for right now, I'll be watching and I'll let you know when things change. But for right now, this just isn't a thing. Um, it's a mistake. Hopefully they will fix it and soon. I've spoken with them and they said they're working on it. But until that time comes, I, I can't get behind it in good conscience. And I'm really sad about that because I wish I could. So feel free to ask me questions. You all, you all know where to find me. You can comment here. You can, you can email us, info at conciergediamonds.com, or just call. I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks.